when we talk about partition by default f5 comes with your common partition now there are some scenarios where you have a single f5 with multiple partition let's say at and wants to use this or Oracle company wants to use this and forces wants to use this so it's like a multiple virtual routers or virtual partition you want to create vsys in fortigate it's called vsys where you want to segregate one f5 hardware into multiple partitions so that you can save the cost for purchasing in hardware so that is where it comes your <coughs> partition role so when we talk about partition in partition guys by default everything is in common partition until we create partition differently so that is called a logical container you can say by default everyone will have access to this and you can do this see you go here and you will see only partition common see no other partition is there so right now what is saying is one customer only have access to this for at and i have a separate f5 for Oracle, I have a separate F5. For Infosys, I have a separate F5. That is called every partition will have common. Particular hardware for particular customer. Now, sometimes requirement comes in where I want to segregate my F5. Multiple customer wants to use this. Same F5 I want to use for at and or Oracle and Infosys, but I don't want that at and should view the configuration. He is able to view the Oracle configuration or Oracle can view the Infosys configuration. So that is where your partitions comes into picture. <coughs> so in this, what I'm saying is when I talk about partition guys, we will segregate F5 into multiple partition so that one hardware can be used by multiple customers. So how we can do is guys, we, we have a concept of virtual router here that is called route domain. So for one F5 at and customer, we will create one at and partition. For Oracle, we will create Oracle partition. So how we will do system users partition. So here I will create one partition called Oracle. Finish. Can you see default route domain? I'm in signing, but generally, I will assign into different routers because routing table is different. Different schemas are there. AT and T as one partition. You can give name ATT. <coughs> now, next partition is Infosys. Now, guys, what we have done is you can we will see this one F5 is been used by multiple customer. It's like just a VRF or VSYS concept, or you can say virtual router. You are making one F5 logically separate with different customers. That is very, very important. When it comes into picture, you need to understand how it goes. So now I want that Infosys user should not view, but let me do one thing. I will go to Infosys and create some virtual server. Here you need to take into consideration 
whatever changes you want to do for Infosys customer, that you will do on Infosys partition only. If it is related to AT&T VIP, then you need to go to AT&T and configure your virtual servers, your profiles, plus your pool members. So that is where it comes into picture. Now, what we will do? I will go here in Infosys and I will create one virtual server quickly. Can you see? Infosys has right now access to your whatever is configured in common, every partition will have that access. Whatever is configured in common, it will see by all other customer. But what you configure in particular partition that will be not accessible by another customer. I will show you. One dot. Let's say name is Infosys. I in I will say Infi VS one. You can give any IP one sixty eight one dot seventy five eighty. That's it. <coughs> now, guys, what I will show you here is. Now, if I go into AT&T, will AT&T customer be visible? See, guys, if I go to AT&T, he is not able to view my Infosys, what I have created in Infosys virtual server. So even in guys, let's say in one company, you have different department, IT, computers. You can also use partition role here also. You have one other department it is application owner department but as a live use case you will see that you will create multiple partition when you want to segregate your customer traffic so you will play with your route domain route domain is nothing but a vrf so i will show you how to create route domain but you need to understand this first what is partition how we create now if i go to infosys you will see one in forces VS. <clears throat> now, if I go here in any other Oracle, Oracle will not see this. Now you need to understand this thing. Every customer will access to your common partition whatever you configure in common every customer can view because that is common to all let's say http profile is common to all so that is common now but whatever you configure on particular partition that is not visible for at and or oracle i have created one virtual server that was not visible from Oracle or AT&T. So once you segregate your partition level, first what you do, let's see. First you create a partition. Okay, you have created the partition. Now you have created the name. After that, guys, you create a VLAN and network configuration. Because every network configuration for other customers can be having in different IP addresses, right? Now, guys, once you create VLANs, after that, there is a concept called route domain. For every partition, there will be a separate route domain. Or you can say VRF. Very, very important. What is route domain? You should understand. When I talk about route domain, you can say that. I will show you. If I talk about route domain, it means there will be a separate. Network traffic. Or separate routing table for AT&T, separate routing table for Oracle, separate routing table for Infosys. So route domain is an object in app file that isolate your network traffic for particular application 
it is the same concept of VRF, virtual routing table. So basically it is used for segmentation. See one F5 is using different partition. It has separate network. It will have separate network routing. So how you can segregate that is done by routing table. Route domain object. So what I will say another example use case is using route domain feature. You can provide hosting service. Let's say Flipkart is one application. Which is common for multiple customer. So you can use using route domain. You can use same subnet here also here also here. With route domain, you can use duplicate IP address also. One application is, let's say, Google Cloud. That should be accessible from AT&T also, Infosys also, and Oracle also. So you want to host one service for multiple customer. How you can do that segregation? That is used by a route domain. <coughs> So you will create self IPs VLAN for this customer and route routing. You will create self IP VLAN for this customer. You will create self IP VLAN for this customer. So this is the live production which I am showing you guys. In production also you can segregate this. How you can do though? You will go to network tab. Then there is a concept of route domain. Now here you will create a route domain for separate customer. It will be unique ID. So I will say name ATT ID is one. Now here you will define. You can also let's say guys one more use case good example. Let's say I have a customer. Let's say I have a F5 device LTM and I have taken virtual edition with one gig throughput. Now I have five customers needs to deploy it in this F5 ATT, Oracle, Verizon, Infosys. He wants to use 200 Mbps. He wants to use 300, 200. So you can apply it bandwidth controller also, guys. And separate VLAN will be called here. That is how you create your route domain. Now what I will do quickly guys. I will go into Infosys because I've created Infosys partition and In Infosys partition. What I will do. I will create one VLAN. Infi VLAN 10. <coughs> it's saying that it's tagged. Let's see because that is already tagged. So it will not allow me. So I need to make it tagged. So what I will do now, I will go to network tab route domain. Now here it will show me see. ID I can give name here. What name I can give any name eight in fee. ID one. And finish. <coughs> now I will create self IP. And here you can define now once I create here you can define self IP is also for Infosys. And you can define that VLAN. Now, guys, you need to play with your routing table because your AT&T customer will have separate routing. So you can define here one routing table. Say zero default. Zero dot zero dot zero zero dot zero dot zero. 
I will say ten dot two dot or let me give this external IP. <coughs> so this is how you can. Now I can go to bandwidth controller here in acceleration. I can give bandwidth here in fee. I will give 300 Mbps. So that is what is the meaning of your route domain and how you create partition with route domain guys. So good example is where let's say you have an ISP which is serving multiple customer. So one more example of route domain is let's say you have an ISP at and that serves multiple customers. It serves Infosys, it serves other customers like Spectra, Reliance. Reliance is also ISP, so I will tell anything else customer, XYZ. So where now this customer will deploy a separate application in this customer, it will deploy a separate application. So how F5 will isolate the traffic? So it is done by route domain. This will have separate routing table. This will have separate routing table. This will have separate routing table. And every route domain which you create, this will have separate ID number one, two, three. So that is called route domain concept in F5, guys. It is similar to VRF in Cisco. If someone has worked on Cisco, basically it divides one routing table into multiple route tables. With the help of route domain, I'm saying to provide one hosting service for multiple customers.